is Rosu Gamers Weekly from yesterday, Sunday. Um, LW Red, which is the Korean team, versus TS Mitt, which is, I guess, a new North American team made up of players from CLG and NG Red and Indust. I don't know who Mo Pork is, but I know Moffat rest of them. So it's Indust on Mercy, Chance on Reinhardt, Spo on Lucio, McCree, Reaper, Gloria. Pretty straightforward comp if it was last patch, I guess, plus the Mercy minus the Zenyatta. LW Red has Starkey on the Zen, Pine on the McCree. Ooh, they're running like a last, this is like the straight last patch comp. No team is running an Ana. Um... Which is kind of surprising, I guess. And both teams running a Lucio, which is interesting as well. So, I'm not really sure what happens here. Yes, mid is on offense. The camera is staring at this poster. And they don't really have a win condition. This team is just like a very standard comp. It's just get good reses. If you get good reses, you'll win the game. If you don't get good reses, you lose. That's kind of the story of Mercy. Why are we doing this, cameraman? Where you guys spam T tours in Twitch chat and then see what happens. People who want to take you out of the sky, you're always running into a McCree, you're always running into 76, you're running into trouble. When you start winning, sure, you can switch to it, but people don't like switching to it. Pretty good posters. I'm pretty sure you can buy them right now at the Blizzard store. I'm like fairly certain you can buy them at the Blizzard store. I think they added them like last week. So if you really want those posters that they just kindly showed us, instead of showing us the defensive setup positions or <laughs> what heroes are being played. You can go over to the Blizzard store, get them right now. I'm selling out. Are they running a Hanzo? Is this actually a Hanzo? Hanzo's interesting because he got buffed this patch and because Dragon Ult is really good. It's also really good against Mercy comps, I guess, because you don't really, like, you're gonna get the kills. Um, it's better against the Mercy comp than non Mercy comps because, like, if they res, you can kind of Dragon Blade over, or you can, like, Dragon Arrow over the res. But it looks like he did switch off, so. I'm getting trolled, and now they're back to McCree. So Pine's just gonna sit up here. He's kind of a DPS god. He knows he can't die, so he just sits up there pretty safely. Hits the Flashbang, which I honestly thought missed, and then just sits back. Um. Moffat did get a pick though. Moffat got two. They got two picks right off the bat, so they should be able to win this pretty easily. I'm not really sure what just happened. I mean, that was a lot of picks for no for free. Um, they kind of just walked in. I didn't really like the defense setup from MLW Red. Um, it wasn't very tanky and it wasn't very safe. Like, they're now switching the Reaper to a Pharah, which is bizarre to me. I don't hate the Pharah because there's no. I mean. I don't know. It's bizarre that they switched to Pharah. I guess they wanted to get back faster, and they thought that they could defend, and now they're just kind of stuck on this Pharah, but maybe they were planning on running the Pharah the whole time. Um, but yeah, they didn't really contest the entrance at all, and this comp doesn't really do well. I don't really like this comp on defense, the McCree Reaper Zarya. I think it's too safe. Like, I think you need to run a hero that's a little more... Like, something that'll mess you up a little bit better. Like, I would prefer a Roadhog or something instead of the Reaper, because as you saw, it just kind of got ran over. They didn't have much survivability either. It was, I'm not really sure. I th like they just walked in. I'm not, I don't think that that works nine times out of 10, but they got, they gave him too much room. Like Pine was just sitting up top on this balcony ledge. And then they, the, by the time he even peaked, the Reinhardt was already here. That means that they got way too much space, but they don't have anything to disrupt the shield. So like, I'm pretty sure Chance was just able to walk in. Um. I think generally you want to run like a Roadhog or, I mean, teams run Junkrat sometimes. Pretty much you need something to deal with Chance's shield, because if Chance is able to walk up to the point like that and your McCree is just hiding up here, you're not getting a lot of damage done. Like, he didn't do any damage to the shield, so I think that that made a big difference. Moffat just hit a lot of headshots. And now they just roll in. Uh, coming out from the side of Team Solomit here as well. Hitting his shots. Giving his team great opportunities to choose when they want to have fight and support. That's why, uh, you know, Lucio will always... I will say, though, that some teams just struggle on defense. And some teams are just really good at offense. There's very few teams that can do both well. I don't hate this Farah, though. Like, he's just going to stay up here on the roof. I guess he can conk people off. There's not much else to talk about. The one thing that's important, though, here is that Indust has ult. Um, so they should be able to take a fight right now. And they have... They should know that they're ahead in the Reinhardt ult war because they just won the fight so handedly. 
Like Chance already has all. It's only been like forty-five seconds or something, or a minute, fifth, minute forty-five. Yeah, minute forty-five. What's up, Jay? I'm cheered up. I just don't uh smile much when I'm doing vods because I'm just doing vods. But yeah, LW Red has zero ults, and Moffat's just living life. So if they can get like a high new, if they can get roof control, they're in really good position because if you can keep Indust upstairs, like up here, he's safe and he can get the res off. But um, they just switched to Wolf off of the. The Reaper to go Farah, I guess because they want to just take another air fight. Some teams, like the counter to Farah is generally like a McCree or like a um, 76, I guess, but 76 is really out of the meta. I don't know if I agree with the Farah though. I guess you kind of want to run it with the Mercy, like Farah Mercy is still good, but they're running Zen McCree and Pine's like a god. So it's a little risky, I think, to run Farah in general against Zenyatta. I think Mercy Fire is pretty good, but against Zenyatta, I think it's going to be hard. I'm not sure if this is like the play or if they like had this pre-planned, but their comps kind of split between like high ground and low ground, and I don't like that either in general. Um, most times, if you run like a Farah to get up on the roof, you want like another hero that can get on the roof pretty fast, and they don't really have that right now. Um, everyone has to take the elevator outside of Spo, I guess. But I guess if you can knock people off the roof, maybe that's all they want to do. But yeah, both comps, they're mirrored now, except for the Mercy versus the Zen. So it's going to come down to whether or not they can kill the Zen first, or the Mercy first. Because if the Mercy dies last, they'll get a good res. But if the Mercy gets no res off, then they're just going to get run over because of the damage mission from Zenyatta. They shouldn't sort of invest all their eggs into having high ground, but they should use it effectively. So but Nanohana is just going to sit up here and spam. I guess you kind of want to take the air fight though if you're at lower ping and you know that you're at lower ping because it's really hard to run fire. I mean, we're just going to see Wolf run in here. It looks like they're just rolling right now. Like, this is such a convincing offense that High Noon was really good. It instantly killed them. Farah. The Farah still has nothing. Pine's a little bit out of position here. Like, very out of position here. They're not playing very refined, and I thought... I heard that they, like, plowed through this entire um, tournament. But I thought that they would... Like, they don't look very coordinated right now. Like, right now they're grouping up, which is smart, but that last play by Pine, like, looked really bad. They're in a good position to defend the cart, though. I don't think that... Uh, ESM is going to be able to hold this very easily. Just kidding, they're just going to roll them over. They're actually... Uh, there's nothing to analyze here, they're just getting plowed. Like, this is just a straight dominant push. Like, the cart hasn't stopped moving, nobody's really died. The good thing is, though, that when you're up on defense and you have your five, six alts like LW Red does right now, is it's really hard for offense to push. Like... Offense only has three ults. If they just make the most, of, like that's a really bad black hole. He has zero charge. Um, he gets lucky though, because I think Pine broke the shield with his high noon. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, like you're gonna see now, LW Red's in a pretty decent spot as far as defending last, because they always have an ult to cater to like their defense. Like they can pop Transcendence, they can pop Reinhard ult. Like there's a lot of options for them. Whereas TSM kind of has to rely on that Mercy Res. So as long as the... It depends on how the Mercy Reses go, I think. Pine hits the shots he needs to hit. They're okay though, because the Zenyatta still has trans. Although that was not the play. I don't know what this fire is doing. Zenyatta should be able to defend the cart. Zenyatta just didn't defend the cart? What, what just happened? All right, I don't know what just happened. The Zenyatta definitely shouldn't be able to defend the cart there. Not this time. And the fact that they didn't pop Zenyatta ult to stop the barrage was really dumb. Like, I don't... I mean, I don't like using the word dumb. It was just ill... Like, it was just not well executed. If you're going to hit... Like, you have Zenyatta ult, you have the Transcendence, why not just use it to counter the barrage at that point? Because the barrage can only out damage the Zen ult if it's at, like, a certain range. Outside of a certain range, the spread on the rockets is too high. And then you wind up in a position where you're doing a lot of damage, but it's not enough damage. Too many people died during that push for them to not defend the cart with the Zenyatta trans. Um, so yeah, that's a really good time from TS Mitt and a pretty poor defense from LW Red. I don't, I don't know why it went so poorly. I, they had... 
I don't know. They had that that trans not going off is really mind blowing to me because they had it and they could have even used it to delay the cart like five seconds and they didn't. I guess they wanted to wait for people to live or they thought that they had more time than they did, but that just goes back to them like taking the fight too late because they got rolled so hard. Alright, but they're running the competitive, like the ranked rule set, which means that it's going to go to a second half now if LW Red finishes. Now LW Red is on offense and TS Mid is on defense. And TS Mid's running the exact same thing, except, no, it's the exact same thing that LW Red ran. Um, depending on how Moffat plays, I guess, will be the teller of this. Because, um, like you saw Pine before, Pine didn't get anything done on his McCree at the beginning of the match. He just kind of stood up there and like took poke shots. I think that, that was their mistake, if I had to name one mistake. But, um, yeah. Their defense doesn't have any shield break. They're not running a Lucio. They have a lot of damage between the Zenyatta and the Mercy. But they don't have the speed boost. Um, this lineup's very good though, I think, the Zenyatta Mercy on defense, because you don't need speed on this first point. The only issue that you run into is that if this first point hold fails, you wind up in a position where you really want that Lucio, and then you're really far behind, because the enemy team has the Lucio, and it probably has ult, so you probably, you have to like lose two or three fights, or like at least one or two fights, um, because you don't have the speed, and the speed is super important on the streets phase. They're not even going to run Mercy LW Red. They're just like, I don't want to run Mercy. Mercy's kind of risky on um, uh, had the combo ready. I think we almost actually flashed by offense. I mean, Mercy's just a risky pick in general. Teams are going to run her more, but I think she's less reliable in terms of winning games because you'll notice sometimes teams will run Mercy and the Mercy will die like one or two times. And that's all it takes for the Mercy to... Like, if the Mercy's dead, it's just not worth the hero at that point. So your Mercy has to play really particularly well for, I think, Mercy to work. Or your team has to play very coordinated in their way of dying and pushing and stuff. For Mercy to work. I think Mercy's good, but I think Mercy's risky, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like, LW, LW's push here is completely dependent on how many times they can kill Indust. And if they can kill Indust well, then they're, they'll be in a good spot. Are they going to stick with the Roadhog Hanzo? Because that's a pretty good comp for this map, particularly. Or specifically, rather, not particularly. My English is bad. Genji's cool, though. Um, they're not running a tank. This is very bizarre. I will say that this is, if this is what they're running, this is this is definitely like... Never mind, they switched. I going to say, that's a strange comp. This comp's really good, though, on this map. I like it a lot. Um, I don't like the McCree. I think the McCree is the mistake. Unless Pine just hits all of his shots. I think generally if you want to run this comp, you just get a Tracer in there or a another tank, maybe a Roadhog. Like, Roadhog's not bad. The problem with running McCree without Reinhardt is that you're very exposed and you don't have a lot of HP. So, like, if they get a few good shots off on Pine, he's kind of just boned. But this is a very all-in strat, and it might have something to do with the fact that their time is so bad that they just want to get in and get out fast. Because they can just dive in right now with this Winston and put a bubble on him and see what happens. Winston plus Discord is also really strong. This is interesting that they're just going to go right down the stairs. Winston's in already, gets melted. Yeah, that was a little ill fated. The name is Luxury Watch? That's cool. I didn't know what LW stood for. Now we know. Um, that push was kind of uncoordinated and kind of like, I don't think that that's how you play that comp. I think you have to just commit on the point with everybody because you, they're going to live here with Pine and probably a few people, but honestly, I'd rather them die. If they could kill the Zenyatta, if they could all in on the Zenyatta or the Mercy, it's very good for them. Does that make sense? Because if they kill either healer, the other healer is not good enough to keep the rest of the team alive. And they can come back to the fight before that healer respawns. I think if they should have just committed harder with the Zarya and the Winston and everyone on the point, the Genji, and just tried to go straight for the Mercy or the Zenyatta, just because it takes so long for them to get back to the point without the Lucio, that they could take another fight before the respawn comes in from the Zenyatta or the Mercy. Um, the thing about this comp is it's very good if the fights are short and single target, but this comp can't AoE heal, so... The Winston does AoE damage, the Genji kind of does AoE damage in the blink, and Zarya is pretty good at AoE damage too. 
So like, I would have preferred for them to have all in on the point, but what they did was okay. I, it wasn't really okay. It was just they were they were way too cautious with a comp that's designed to go in. But you're seeing Arcane already almost has his ult. And drop the beats can be pretty devastating against this comp if they can get the mercy fast, especially if they can kill Spo. If Spo goes down here, their defense is very rough to execute. High noon. There. He held that. He should have held that or started that earlier. I'm surprised he didn't. Now he's dead. It's not bad though, I think, for them because they got the mercy res out. And now they can come in with drop the beat on their own. And they have the black hole. So it's black hole versus black hole. One team doesn't have res. But, um, I don't know. This awesome guy, Winston, is having a hard time getting anything done because the Zarya and the Reaper are always there to catch him. And so is the Discord orb. So, like, this Winston needs... They're initiating with this Winston, which is kind of nice. And it made them all turn around to eat that black hole. Are they going to die here? They should just die here. Die here. Genji's still in behind them. I would have preferred if they didn't use ults there. After that black hole, like once they pop, Pine is just going in. Pine does not care right now. I thought that that push was going to fail, but Pine just does not give a shit. Look at him. He's just whipping his mouse around. That was like, I would have called Vac right there. That was insane. He like rolls in. He like. Flashbangs the Reinhardt, no looks him, turns to the right, turns back, kills the Reinhardt, and then like flicks his mouse up top and like gets a kill. That was insane. Do it again. Like that was that was pretty crazy. Uh would Mercy would they have expected the Mercy? You can just hit tab before the first push. Like they could you can see that they have a Mercy. He's in a really good position to high noon right here if they can get the pressure onto the McCree. The thing is, if you just spend like, if you just wait like 10 seconds or something after you spawn, you can see what the enemy comp is. But they would have seen it when they came in anyway. Ooh, Wolf's in a pretty bad spot here if Wolf goes down. They're running this Winston very differently than most teams run Winston, I guess. Like, they're just using the Genji, or they're using the Winston to initiate and just cause havoc, and it's kind of working for them. Um. And times like these are really awkward for defenses in general, or just comps like this. Like they don't, they just killed the Zenyatta, and now the Mercy has to choose between resing the Zen or not. So it's actually kind of beneficial for Luxury Watch if they don't get any more kills right now, if they just wait like five or six seconds before getting another kill, because they're in a really good spot to take a fight. But you don't, you don't want this Mercy to get value out of the res. So it's a matter of whether or not they can kill the Mercy, or wait a little bit for Spo to start respawning because you don't want them to get a value res off. Does that make sense? It's a really good bubble from Biome. Pine just killed like two or three people by himself. They need to keep the cam on this guy. Pine was actually known for being a sniper in TF2, but I'm pretty sure he got like banned or something. <laughs> Or like suspected cheating. I don't know if he cheated, but I remember Asia Fortress had like some pine scandals or threads. Moffat's gonna sit up here. I don't know what that was. It was awkward. I think he misclicked. And G gets up top. I like this comp too. I didn't really talk about this at all. The Luxury Watch comp on this point specifically is pretty good because they have the Winston and the Genji to make space. This is kind of like how um, Faze ran their comps in general they would run like a mccree in the back with a genji in the front i think they run a reinhardt more often but reinhardt's all right on this point but the winston's just really good i'm getting on the roofs uh winston zari is always strong so if they get black hole they have a lot to combo with and ps mitt doesn't really have high ground at all on their comp they're running a completely ground based composition so anyone that tries to get on the roof, which like generally the McCree wants to get on the roof, he's going to be alone more times than not. And what we're seeing right now is that exactly like Moffat was up there by himself, but they didn't have any way to save him from the Winston or the Genji. And even here, this Reaper goes up and like, what's this Reaper going to get done? Like no one else can get up there. And then the, Fer the Mercy chases him up and like, I don't know why, because no one else can get up there. So now they force out this trans 
and they already killed the Mercy. So the fact that the Mercy died is huge, and then the fact that they can bait out the Trans at the same time is huge. And that's all because TS Mitt tried to get the high ground with heroes that can't go on the high ground. You have to like realize that your comp doesn't work and not try to force it. Um, like the McCree wants to be on the high ground, but you can't be up there alone. So neither can the Reaper. Like he's trying to get in position to use a Death Blossom, but he can't. And because those two went down, it forces Spo into this weird spot where he wants the Trans to save his team in this black hole. But in reality, he should probably just let them die because they don't have any DPS here to fight anyway. So this is just really well played from Luxury Watch, I think. Now they drop the beat to counter, which is good because they don't have anything to counter with that. Wolf gets bopped out of the fight. They're kind of holding here though, which is surprising. I guess Wolf was there the whole time? I don't know. I just see Pine getting kills while we're watching a Reaper that's not doing anything. Alright, there we go. Pine's just hitting his shots with his 9,000 DPI. Look at this guy, dude. He's a god. He just plays so aggressively. He doesn't care at all. It's like really nice to watch. Why is he so cocky? This guy's so cocky. Look at this shit. He just ran in there. This guy does not care. Mine's a nut, dude. This guy's insane. They just got ran over, though. They, the Mercy died first. The Zenyatta popped trans on, like, a black hole that they couldn't fight in. And then, from there, it was just over. Like, they had no answer to the drop the beat. They had no answer to the transcendence. And now you're seeing the forward spawns come into play as, like, four players just got caught in the forward spawn. And now they're just going to get rolled over again. I think this is one of the fundamental flaws with the spawn system is that... So Luxury Watch won the fight pretty handedly, and then they had to use alts to win the fight, but then they gained their alts a little bit more than they should because of the spawns from TS Mitt being right there. Like, they just died again, whereas if they had spawned at the back, they wouldn't have died at all, and maybe these alts would be down like 20 or 30% each. So that's like one reason I think that the spawns really make the snowballing a little bit worse than it should be. But Pine, look at this guy. He's not even full health. He just does not care. He's like, I'm going to crouch walk up here. I'm going to try to get a high noon from behind. Crouch walking is pretty good. I wish that there was just a button to walk in this game, to be honest with you. It's so, you not know, to crouch, but... The good thing, too, is that if anyone comes up here, like, they're still not... They just switched to the Pharaoh Winston, but it's, like, kind of late. This comp would have been good five minutes ago, but now it's kind of delayed, and they're behind... Um, if Pine just stays here, I think he just kills them all. Because they're going to try to contest the cart. Because, like, that's what, generally what you want to do. But if he just sits up here and gets a good high noon, which he is going to. Yep. There goes the Pharah automatically. What? Alright, he just lived with 19 health. Um, he should be dead. That flashbang hit somehow, and then he rolled off the ledge. But yeah, he should be dead, this guy. Alright, there he goes. He's dead. That was pretty clutch, though. They overalted here for sure from TS Mid. They popped Trans, they popped Earth Shatter, but I'm pretty sure they had already won before the Earth Shatter. Like, I really don't think they need Earth Shatter. I guess they're just trying to draw out the clock, so it's okay. Um, but now they don't have that, and if they can kill Indust fast, they'll just win right here. We'll see what happens. I don't actually know the outcomes or how this fight down i just know who wins the map who winston gets in there cancels the high noon that's really good and now the team is kind of split up they keep not specking pine until it's after he already got his kills he's already up here he almost got that what this guy's nuts look at this guy's tracking I don't know if that's like the Korean ping, like automatically. He just got a triple kill without high noon. He doesn't need high noon. This guy is better than high noon. And he has like 9 million DPI. What is this game? He plays really well, though. Like his positioning in general is just really good. As he hits four shots in a row. Back 
That May can't die there. I don't know what the situation was with the May, but that May dying was pretty bad. Or like a little quicker than I expected. I will say though, I don't find the Koreans are playing very well in terms of their teamwork or anything in that regard. I think that they're just out deathmatching the shit out of everybody. Like this, I want to say, if there was a scoreboard, you could probably see Pine has like a majority of their kills and probably a massive chunk of their damage. Their strat's pretty much like awesome guys going to jump in. So I, I want to talk about this too, because this is really cool to me here. This is different, is that... They switch their Zarya to their Reinhardt. So I don't know if their Zarya player is their Reinhardt and they find those two heroes interchangeable because that's interesting if they do. Like, no other team does that. Normally, the Winston player would play the Zarya. So that's kind of cool that they have a Winston Reinhardt comp. Most teams aren't running this right now. I don't know why. I mean, it just generally doesn't happen. Generally, you run a Zarya. And they're just not running Zarya, but they're interchanging their Zarya with their Rhine, which is one thing. I guess because they saw the Diva come out. I don't know why they switched to Rhine, to be honest with you. But um Yeah, like Envious will do that because I don't I think that Envious is a little bit more I mean I don't watch this team enough to know, but Envious switches a lot of their players, like Coco will do it or Harry Hook not Harry Hook. Um Hulk. It's Coco and Hulk will like randomly play Zarya, either of them. Or sometimes like Hulk will play Reaper. So, I mean, it's just different, you know? Like sometimes teams run swap it up. I don't know if this team constantly, consistently does this or if it's like just this map or just this point. But that was a pretty good push from them. The good news, I mean, there's not really much good news. TS Mid has a better time, so they have a lot more time for the second half. All W Red finished in that weird spot where you're below a minute, but not by a lot. So they're going to get their minute three three seconds um but pine just really went off the rails on that game and i don't think ts mint really ever got in position they got a you saw them kind of fumble over themselves on the second point with their comp and then the third point it felt like they just kind of got ran over by pine and awesome guy like they run this winston and the winston just makes space while the mccree shoots I wish the cameraman had gone more for Pine's point of view or for Awesome Guy's point of view instead of Moffat because I felt like Moffat actually didn't get much done. We were watching him a lot of the time. But yeah, good positioning from Pine and good aim from Pine really won them this fight. And I guess that their ults were also in line. It's just I felt like TS Mitt never got their feet planted on the ground. It was just they got their feet a little bit better planted than Luxury Watch did in the first half. Like, Luxury Watch got completely ran over. Like, there's no doubt about it, and there's, like, no tiptoeing around it in the beginning. But TS Mitt looked kind of stable on the first point and then kind of stable on the last point. But the cart did have break. Like, the cart did break, so they have... They didn't, like, get a perfect time, but... I feel like the defenses were really poor from both teams. And I feel like the overall execution of the strategy was just better from TS Mitt as opposed to LW which really relied on some really dope deathmatch. So now they're going to attack again with their minute. The cameraman's lost. <laughs> Actually you can't no clip, no clip. But I think he could hit spacebar or F1 or something and go straight to someone's point of view. So Pine is known for his Widowmaker. He might stay on the Widowmaker. This is interesting too, if they're actually doing this, in that they're switching their... What was Nanohana playing? He was the Genji. Now he's playing the Kree. And Pine is going to go Widowmaker. So they're just going double hit scan behind the Reinhardt shield. I guess because they only have a minute, they're just relying on his hit scan. Which is strange, <laughs> to say the least. But, I don't know, it might work. This is a pretty good comp. I would expect them to round it out with a Lucio or a Mercy. I'd probably say Mercy's the best bet here because you have to kind of just keep rolling. Oh, they're going to go Lucio Winston. I got trolled. Is Pine going to stay Widow though? No. Tracer. Okay, I want. this is what I said at the beginning. This was what I called for at the first push. And I said that you shouldn't run the McCree with their comp. And I was... I guess they kind of knew that too, and that they're going to switch to the Tracer now. And I like this comp better because it's very deep, like it's very all-in. And it needs to be all-in because there's no 
way for like like you, th there's no room for error here it's like you have to win you have to win now your first push has to be good because i don't even know that you get time for a second push on this map with one minute you might get a second push at max but this first push has to be really good ts mitts comp i think is the mistake here I would probably switch out the Reaper with Azaria, or switch the Reaper to the Roadhog and then put Mopork on the Zarya. I think if you only have to hold for a minute, you should probably just run heroes that can stall a little bit better. A May wouldn't be bad here. A I like the Roadhog, but I think May Reaper would be or May Reaper Zarya would be better than Winston. Not Winston. Roadhog, Reaper, McCree. I just don't like this comp, I guess, because it doesn't deathmatch particularly well. Like, if they just get in on this McCree, there's no, like, Zarya bubble to save him. If they get on the Zarya... Like, the same thing. This is a very all-in comp, and if they can kill this McCree, Pine's just gonna go nuts. I think that they mistakenly run this... I think that the Roadhog's the mistake here from TS Myth. I don't know if they're expecting the Zarya though, but the Zar if the they ran the Zarya before, and the Zarya is just always good on offense on this map, so I don't know why they wouldn't, why they would run the Roadhog on purpose. I think that the Zarya is just going to shut it down. But this is going to have to be the Pine Show and the Nanohana Show because that's what it comes down to. And they're going to run like this C9-esque strategy where they get the Tracer in the back it looks like, and then just jump the Winston in over the top. What did I just do? I appear to have messed up the sizing of the screen. Hold on, I know what I did. I always do this. Okay. I don't know what key I hit, but I always do that. Okay, so they're already distracting with Pine in the back. He doesn't have to do anything. He's very aggressive and he's already... They're just letting him get in for free. Like, this is so much space from him. They executed this so well, and it's so hard to deal with this if you don't have the right setup at the beginning of the map. So, like, if the Tracer goes around back, someone needs to call that shit immediately, and the McCree needs to rotate. Moffat needs to not be fighting anything else that's not that Tracer. If you don't kill this Tracer, the Tracer kills you, and your game is just over. And that's literally what just happened. It's hard to know that this is coming, I would say, in general. There's not like a plan, like teams don't really plan for it, but it's just a matter of if the rotations come in. And the second that you see the Tracer go around for that big health pack, a McCree needs to be there ready around a corner, like with a flashbang to kill him instantly. Once some Tracer's out of the picture, the game gets a little bit easier because like, you saw the Tracer dance on Wolf. Wolf like wasted half his ammo shooting this Tracer and then the Winston came in and he had nothing to kill the Winston. And then once the Winston was in, then the Tracer comes in again and then nothing. there was nothing to be done there. That was a very good push, though, from them. And that's what I mean. The Roadhog there probably did nothing. He might have gotten a hook, maybe. But now this guy's taunting and shit. And this is another downfall of their comp again. They don't have high ground for the second point. And they don't switch their heroes here. Like, they're arrogantly staying on these heroes. I don't know if this Sticky Bomb's going to do anything, but we'll see. They switch off! Why do you switch off?! All right, so off screen while we're what is happening? Why did the, why would you switch the camera off there? So Pine just goes in there and he gets the sticky of uh, the pulse bomb on the Mercy, and that's huge because Indus didn't get anything done at the beginning. Um, like he actually got nothing done. He died instantly and only has fifty percent res, and then Pine just stuck him and got another fifty percent res. So now they're running. No mercy because the mercy's dead. They have no high ground heroes because they just decided not to run high ground heroes. And Spo has 36% ult. So if you're TS Mitt, you're in a very, very bad position right now. But I don't know why we're watching Wolf. Like, the offense is definitely the people to be watching right now because it's do or die for them. This Reaper is never going to get something done. The next person that should be on. If I, so, like, I want to talk about this just for a second because it kind of makes me angry. If you're looking at this game right now, the next person that should be spectated should either be Nanohana or Moffat. It should have been Pine the whole time because Pine was that stick pulse bomb, so we should have been watching him for the pulse bomb. But now Nanohana is at 96%. The camera should 100% be on him or on Moffat. I don't want to rant about this too long, but this keeps happening and it's kind of frustrating. Um... 
this like I should be watching the Genji's point of view right now because the Genji is really what's gonna set up the next push. And they don't have. So here, I'm wa they're still not on Anohana. Anohana goes down, but he gets a kick, and now they're getting run over by this Winston. It looks like Mo so Moffat got a 2k, I think, with the high noon in the back. It killed the Zar. No. We kill. It killed the Tracer and the Zenyatta because they didn't have any shield. Luckily, they had one person on the point. Um, because the, there's only one person on the car right now, and I guess it's Arcane. If Arcane or Biom had gone down there, they would have had nobody on the cart. But look at Awesome Guy, dude. He's just in. He does not care. This is some sick Winston name. That's not something I say every day. Spo died there without popping trans because he didn't want to pop trans. I don't know if popping trans was the play, but Inda still doesn't have his first res. And the camera right now should be on Pine, because Pine is the next person to get ult. And there's the Sticky. Sticky hits Chance. Chance goes down to 5 HP. Now Awesome Guy just jumps in because he don't care. He's awesome. So Awesome Guy and Pine just mowed down Wolf. I'm not sure how Wolf died there. They're still not running Azaria on TS Mitt. This comp is really questionable to me. I don't like running Winston without Genji or Tracer. I think Winston needs Genji or Tracer to make space. And that's why this comp is working a lot better because Awesome Guy can just jump in with a bubble from the Zarya and then the Tracer can just come in the back and mess them up. But they don't have the right heroes to answer this on TS Mitt. Like this McCree has so much heavy lifting to do that it's insane. And the... I don't... I don't know. Like Beyond just got two kills by spamming down this hallway. Now they're gonna res and they're gonna black hole I would imagine. The Spo pops trans at the same time as they pop res after they're just play this this winston's getting so much done it's like blowing my mind like he just got another kill on the mercy there during the res and now spose ulting specifically to save chance who's earth shattering but if starkey gets his trans off then they're in a good spot and this is actually really clutch that was super clutch um beyond would have died if starkey didn't pop the transcendence and Beyond would have died if Arcane hadn't dropped the beat at that like specific moment. But since they did <laughs> save Beyond there, Beyond has a really good black hole right here. And they have the Winston, I think, still to finish it up. Yeah, the Winston's still there doing damage. Like, they're just rolling them over. And this just goes back to the comp being questionable. But now you're like kind of scared if you're TS Mitt. Like, first of all, your first point defense was bad because you ran the Roadhog. Your second point defense is kind of bad because you never got your feet set planted and it's because Pine got a sticky bomb on your Mercy at the beginning of the game and you're not running a high ground comp still. I don't know if they don't have a Genji player, maybe they just don't have a Genji player. Maybe they don't have a Tracer player either. But this is very... I don't. This comp doesn't work on the second point of Hollywood. It's just way too hard to make work. Like you have to rely on the enemy team just not going on the roof or just not going into you like their only range damage with this comp is the mccree whereas like they have the tracer to spam a little bit they have the zarya right clicks they have the genji shurikens they have like the winston to jump in to like close the distance this comp has a lot of synergy this comp does not have a lot of synergy they're getting they're like they're making a lot happen and it's really impressive to me how good that this Winston is playing or just like how much he's getting away with. It's hard to focus him down with this comp too because if Arcane's in the back healing him, I think that they just all in on this um, Winston. Like they have the Harmony Orb on him, they have the, the Tracer following him, they have the Bubble on him, and they have like the Lucio spamming him. Who's the best hero to take down Tracer in your opinion? Um, I think the best counter to Tracer is your own Tracer. Um, I mean, McCree's obviously safe, but if you miss a flashbang with McCree, you just like you, you're done. Like that's it, you're done. Whereas like Tracer can kind of chase another Tracer. The thing is, on defense, if you're running Tracer, you can be annoying and you can shut down the offensive Tracer, but you don't really have to get a million kills, I guess. 
if you're shutting down the enemy tracer with your own tracer, like that's really good. But yeah, this comp is never gonna like the only way that this tracer dies is if Moffat hits a flashbang. Otherwise, he's just kind of free to do whatever he wants. But this Winston, like, I can't get over how good this Winston is. Like you have Pine just hitting his shots because he's consistently good. I mean, you have two player. Look at this Winston. Winston does not care right now. They're getting so much work done. Look at this guy, dude. Making space, comes back. Two people just fed by themselves. Three people just fed by themselves. He's trying to... And I guess this is something to take away. Is like, if you're playing Winston, this is like... Very... High level Winston play. He's like trying to jump over people so he can push them back towards his team. I mean, the McCree just kind of died there. But they're playing so sloppy right now, TS Mitt. Like... This is a very, their defense never looked good to begin with, but this is just showing how poor it really was, I guess. Their comp doesn't work and they're not executing the comp well. Running a Reaper, let's talk about this too. If you're running a Reaper, if you're not running a Lucio for this much of the map, you need to win your fights. Like you need to win your fights. A Lucio, like a non-speed boosted Reaper isn't scary at all. A non-speed boosted Reinhardt's not really that scary at all. Like they're just kiting the shit out of these heroes because they can't do anything because they just get speed boosted out or healed up. And they don't have the best gap closing. So any time that someone dies on TS mid, they just get run down. I don't know that Lucio is 100% out of the meta. I think you should, you can definitely ditch Lucio on the first point of a map, but towards the second and third points, like you're just seeing how hard it is for them to do anything. Like, a, what's a Reaper going to do? Just walk at you? And then, like, you're just going to let him, like, continue walking at you? Like, they don't have a way to get the Reaper on somebody. And they don't really have a way to get the McCree on somebody. And the f Mercy is just kind of being... I don't know what the word is. Like, the Mercy is not as good because they don't have any high ground. If you don't have high ground, like, the Mercy's jetpack thing is just not worth it at all. Or it's just not as effective as it could be. So now Spo hits Trans. Chance is already dead, so that's really bad that Chance died. Because now they don't have anything. Like that, losing your tank is huge in general in this game. Double Sticky Bomb, easy game. Indus still does not have res. They just ran them over, man. <clears throat> the, he finally uses the Trans, but he didn't get Chance with it. Let's talk for a second... I'm gonna like they win. There's no way that that happens on defense right now for or on offense right now for TS Mid. People were saying at the beginning, I think when this mat, when like matchmaking came out or for like season two with the time bank system on payload, I think it really lends itself to consistency. Some people don't like the extra time that you get at the end, like 15 seconds becoming a minute, but it shows in matches like these why it or it's just more exemplified in matches like these where you realize like they had to do it twice you know like ts mit won on offense like their time was better but did they really play better and i think that when you see it in this light the answer is obviously no because they got rolled you know like they had they just the cart there was never not somebody standing on the cart for this team and i want to point out that when it's overtime, like that high of overtime, if someone steps off the cart for like, if there's nobody on the cart for like literally half a second, you just lose. The fact that they ran a Zarya list defense and a Lucio list defense, you could see why that's not the play. I want to say that if they had just gotten a black hole, they could have possibly pulled everyone off the cart long enough for it to have not been capped. And that sounds stupid, but I'm pretty sure that they could have done that. I'm also pretty sure that like one Winston ult with a Zarya bubble could have bounced people off the point for a long enough time, or they could have like death blossomed on the cart with a Zarya bubble. The Zarya is like so good in a position where everyone has to be on the cart. Like if you just black hole the cart, you're guaranteed to get a kill or two because they just have to be on the cart. Yeah, like a conk from a Pharah might not even be bad, but that comp on defense was just so bad and it was bad the first half. It's just, it wasn't as bad as 
Luxury Watch's defense. Like, Luxury Watch had a bad defense, and then TSM had a bad defense, but it was just slightly better. So, like, does that make them the better team on that map? Like, no. It just makes it so that they won by time, but they didn't really outplay them at all. And I think that when you see the comp... When you see them get rolled over in this overtime, it makes you realize why the time bank system is kind of beneficial, because it it makes flukes less important, I guess. If you mess up once on defense, you might just lose the entire map in like 30 seconds. Like that happens sometimes. Like a bad trans will lose you a game, a bad black hole will lose you a game, or a red's not going off will lose you a game. And I think that that's kind of what you saw happen to Luxury Watch on their first defense. Like they just never got game in their like never got a grasp on the game and like their alts weren't good but then when they were on offense in the first half they didn't they didn't look bad you know like their comp was good they just got slowed down a little bit so does that make them the worst team like if it was stopwatch they're the worst team but then you get this overtime with time bank and you see them just completely demolish like uh ts mitt and ts mitt's comp is just like all over the place doesn't make any sense there's no synergy they aren't playing as a unit, and it doesn't. It, it's actually just a really bad comp for Hollywood, in the streets phase at least. And even on the first point, like you, all you have to do is survive and drag out the clock. You might as well run. You could have ran a May and just May altered the cart. I'm pretty sure, and then they would have just frozen on it and died. Like that could have been a play. Something that simple, but they just decided not to so i think that luxury watch deserved the win and i think that the time bank system was good here i guess that's all i'm trying to say at the end of the day it's just like i want you guys to understand why i think it's good it's because like stuff like this can happen and it proves that like getting fluked isn't the end of your life like one mistake isn't the end of the game for you that happens in pubs like i've done that in a pub but like in a match their defense was just really bad like TS Mitt's defense was god awful, and they ne like their synergy on their comp just didn't make any sense. Like run a Lucio, please. And see, like I don't even hate LW Red's comp here because at least it like has a plan, you know. Like they have the uh, like their first defense. They realized that the uh, the Reinhardt got in for free. Chance like just walked up to the point. So this time they're just gonna run a Junkrat and a. Roadhog and just make sure that the shield goes down. And if Chance's shield has trouble, then like they're fine. You know what else is crazy too? That that 437, I'm pretty sure that they just capped the second that they just capped that second round in less than that time. So TS Mate actually has more time than it took LW Red to finish the map. Or close to anyway. Because they essentially just had equal pushes. They do have four and a half minutes to finish out this map. But four and a half minutes is, is a stupid good time. The fact like, that they have to do that is very difficult. But they're running this comp, which is they know that they have to roll. But they're switching their comp to run like... I'll let, all right, Luxury Watch switches it, right? They have those Lucio, they switch off the Lucio, they run Mercy Zarya. Mercy Zarya is definitely good. Or Mercy Zenyatta. I'm fumbling over my words. TS Mitt, I guess they're going to stay on this comp because they want the Black Hole Barrage combo to carry them through the streets phase. But they're not looking... This comp is reliant on Pine missing and Starkey missing. Otherwise, they don't really have the best damage behind the shield, but at least they're running the Zarya this time. Time works, but they have a chance here. Um, I like this scouting arrow kind of thing, it's just like making sure nobody's hiding in that house. But watch the shield from chance, I'm sure it just goes down instantly. So Pine doesn't have anything, you can just sit here and hit headshots on the Pharah as long as he clears that wall, they're fine. And then the other heroes can just spam the choke. Look at this guy go, dude, he's just aiming. I mean, we are gonna have to see a, a pretty blistering time set. Oh, that hook is stupid. Awesome guy managed to whoop out of the air there as well. Farrah goes down early on. The res force very early in the fight now. Junkrat traps on the ground. Manohana, we didn't really talk about this playing the Junkrat in this case. But Ty comes in, he gets himself. Junkrat just killed the Zarya with the tire. Mine is just Jesus still alive. Ooh, the res goes off. 
They got res stupid fast actually on TS Mitt because Wolf ate so many headshots from Pine that he just wound up charging the res super fast. <clears throat> but I think Awesome Guy hit a hook on Wolf. Wolf died instantly. They resed. Nanohana got a kill with a Junkrat tire, but Nanohana got ult really fast too because I think he was just standing spamming the entire time. Um, but Chance went down because his shield was just destroyed. Like the Roadhog and the Junkrat were just spamming the shit out of his shield. And Pine didn't miss many shots there. So their defense was really good. And I like the res out of Arcane. It was only a one man res, but it's they knew that Indus had used his, so there's no real harm in saving it. And now that late kill on Spo is really big because they have to delay this push. Waiting for him and Wolf. Wolf and Spo died super late. But now if you're TS Mitt, you're like kind of scared because you have to get the Zarya ult up and they're not really close to it. And you know why else they're not really close to it? Because they don't really have a hero that combos well with Zarya during fights. Like, the black hole is good, the black hole combos are always good, but they don't have a hero that like you can just bubble and go in with, except for the Reinhardt. But if you're over committing with the Reinhardt, the shield's not that good because the Roadhog and the Junkrat can like mess it up pretty that's a really good high noon or that's just a good value high noon if you get rid of the zarya you just slow down the push zarya is like the entire backbone of their push and now they're even in a better position because starkey and arcane have vault so as long as they can pop a transcendence in the black hole if they ever get this black hole they should be fine but i would expect them to drop the beat right now and just go in but wolf is trying way too hard to like he cheeky and then he just goes down. I, I don't really know what to say about this. I feel like they shouldn't have done that. Like they should have just dropped the beat and gone for a fight and tried to kill Arcane. Because if they can get the fight on Arcane, or at least force out transcendence, that's probably fine for them. But now they're gonna waste the res and then this tire doesn't get anything done. But they made Indus use res, and then they dropped the beat now when half the team is like retreating, it looks like. And now chant like half what is going on? Spo just dropped the beat, but half the team backed up through choke to get out. And now there's like two people fighting on the point, dropped the beaded. The beat dropped on them. And two people in choke. Like they're so split. And I think that they're gonna res this junk rat soon. That was a flying Reinhardt. I don't know what just happened. Arcane still has res though. Massive res and kind of a misplay from TS Mitt. Like you have to know that this is coming. Like this shouldn't be a surprise that this Mercy still has res. Like they just dropped so many ults and they never found the Mercy. Like, And that's another problem with this comp is they don't have anyone to kill the Mercy. Like who's going to kill the Mercy on this team? Nobody. Like they have nobody that can fight in cafe right now. So this Mercy is super safe in this room, and there's really nothing on their team that can deal with it. That's why I think teams are going to start switching towards the Genji Tracer Winston comps on offense, because you need to kill the Mercy. Arcane, this is a crazy value res, it's just like a four-man res, they blew Black Hole, they blew Barrage, the Farah died, Chance died, like, look at Moffat, dude, Moffat's just like, Jesus, guys, now what? Like, there's a Roadhog spawning in front of him, I'm pretty sure there's a Junkrat spawning in front of him somewhere, and then there's this... Reinhardt about to spawn. So he's like destroyed. And now he wasted high noon for nothing. Like they're playing very sloppily, and I think LW Red understands that their comp is just very strong against this. Or it's just that they're understanding that TS Mitt's comp has a lot of weaknesses. Because it was good last patch. Alright, now their desperation's coming out. Like they're like, alright guys, we need We need to get the Ana ult to try to win. Like, they're not confident in the Lucio, but I don't think the issue is the supports. I think it's the fact that the rest of the heroes are just not heroes that you want to take this fight. Like, Nanohana switched to Tracer, which is interesting. They keep not showing the players that need to be shown. Um, In the background of this, Tracer killed Mercy, and this is really good, and I like that this I like this idea in that they're killing the oh, I have the menu up again, I'm so sorry guys. <laughs> um the Tracer had one job to kill the Mercy, and I don't know if he switched because he knew that or because he just wanted to get back to the fight faster. 
But now this Tracer just needs to hunt Indus for the rest of the game, and as long as Indus never gets a good res, their offense is actually just really not going to work. Um, awesome guy gets a hook on the Ana, because I guess the Ana's in the back trying to deal with this Tracer that's killing the Mercy. The hook went, like, these two picks already won them the fight. Everything that happens after this is completely irrelevant, I think. Nanohana didn't get a sticky off. But their defense is still pretty safe because they still have Transcendence. And there's not much burst damage on the side of Tia's mid. Like, they don't have anything that can fight through Transcendence. Aside from the McCreel, but like the McCreel's not gonna get anything done, I don't think, because they can stagger, like they can mess it up with the hook, and worst case scenario, the Mercy just lives. Look at this Ninja Roadhog! I don't know how Chance got there. I'm gonna assume he charged, or he charged. So I guess he charged to try to kill. Yam, he ulted, it looks like. So maybe he ulted and got a charge off on the Mercy, but he missed the enemy Reinhardt. So he charges in to kill the Mercy, but he doesn't kill... He doesn't get Biom, so Biom just hits a massive Earth Shatter behind him. So this kill on Arcane isn't really that good because you just traded your entire team for it. And Indus gets the res off though on those three players. This is, a, this is an awesome defense actually, like they're just playing this really well. Arcane's gonna come back here with res too. I'm pretty sure they're... Pine is a god. But I'm pretty sure Arcane can just come back and res them if he wants. I wouldn't hate the res on Pine here, but maybe they don't really care. You don't really want to overdo it because you don't want the same thing to happen to you to happen to them. Or that happens to them to happen to you, or they can just roll over the point. But they're gonna ult the. They ulted the Reinhardt here, but unless they kill Arcane, it doesn't matter. Doesn't even matter, dude. They still have nothing to kill the Mercy. Yep, and there's the Mercy five man res. Decent push here, but it's like too little too late. They played around that Ana really well, actually. Like, that was the first ult from Spo, I think, the entire game. And it's been like four minutes or two minutes. I think it was two minutes when you switched, so it's been two minutes and you only got one ult. Generally, you can pump out Ana ults, I think, every 30 or 40 seconds if you really want to. And he never actually got him off. They kept killing him with a Roadhog, and they kept killing him with a Tracer, I think. So the fact that they only got one Ana ult out of that entire push is very good for them. But now you don't have, you still don't have a hero to get on the high ground. But the good thing is now, like, they have to push the cart the entire way. So, like, LW Red would really have to mess up for this to not work. Luxury Watch runs, they're not running Lucio, which I think is kind of a mistake, but it might not matter because the enemy team doesn't have a Lucio either. I think Trans is good against Ana ult, but it does, you don't get Trans as fast, so it's kind of unreliable as far as countering Ana ult. But the thing is, all that they have to do is win one fight, and like one high noon can win them the game. If they can just kill Chance, they should be fine, to be honest with you. Like, Chance is the one that needs to die, and somehow that hook goes off and gets a kill. Why is he... I don't know why they switched to Tracer here instead of Winston. Like, Ana ulted Winston is really good. Ana ulted Genji is really good. Tracer just got demolished, actually. High Noon, they need to get rid of that. That's worth High Noon because you get one kill. And then, did you see how fast that was? They got off the card for like half a second and it just ended. That's all they had to do. That's literally... They could have... They could have even ran a Roadhog and pushed them all off the cart, and that would have been good enough. And that's what they did. They were like, we're just going to Roadhog you off the cart. Um, that was interesting. That was an interesting game. I like the Korean defense on that first point. I feel like Luxury Watch played really well towards the second half, but I also feel like TS Mitt played kind of poorly, or like their comps didn't make sense to me, and... 
their synergy wasn't there with their selections. I don't know. They're like it seemed like they were trying to like fit to the meta, but not efficiently enough. Like I'm okay with running Lucio Mercy or Zenyatta Mercy, but I think you can't run it full time on this map, especially because there's so much space to cover, and you need high ground heroes for the second point. It's kind of like Dorado in where if you ever lose roof control and your heroes can't ever get back up, you'll just lose. But it's very hard to lose roof control. Dorado. This map it's a little bit easier to lose roof control because there's two roofs and like there's that bridge and you have to fight on the cart and the cart's not always in line of sight from the roof. Um. I don't know, I don't like the McCree Reaper and Yada defense on the second point of this map. But that was a really good push from them, and uh, I think that we really saw why the time bank system can work, or why it's arguably better, if not like more reliable in terms of deciding the better team. But yeah, that's that VOD.